Hi, my name is Jeannie, and this is my podcast, Bisaya in America. So I'm just going to be sharing my light-hearted views of living in America. I'm not trying to hate on anyone, especially the Americans. I mean, why would I? I'm here. I'm living here amongst you. It means I must really be enjoying my time over here. But I have to tell you that the topic for today is driving in America. It just literally breaks my brain. So, I'm not hating on the Americans. It's just a different way of driving here. I swear, um, it's not what I'm used to. And I'm a logical person when I drive. I turn into like um, a robot. I'm like calculating distance, speed, um, calculating how many inches. Is there a way that I can 50%? Is there 50, 70% cr- um, chance that we won't crash or something like that? I'm a very careful driver. Uh, it's just bit, and it's gotten really good. I've gotten really good at it because I did home health for five years in the Northeast, mind you, in the snow. Not just in the Northeast. No, actually, three years. Three years in the Northeast, um, and six months in Colorado, and then a year in New Mexico, and then now here in Texas. So yeah, so I've been around and I have driven around and it's like just cray cray. Okay, so just to give you a um, background of how different it is. So back in the Philippines, I I was a really good driver. I probably had maybe less than five accidents, maybe three, you know, the first time when I I was still learning and uh, I I drove a manual for many years. Actually, I only started um, driving an automatic regularly here uh, in America. Um, in the Philippines, I drove my dad's truck. We call it a pickup. You guys call it a truck. So for Filipinos, a truck is huge. But for you guys, a pickup is a truck. And I'm like, okay, that's what they call a truck here. But for us, when you say a truck, it's literally the big trucks, the moving trucks, the truck trucks, the Amazon trucks, storage trucks, whatever. So those are trucks for us. But here, a pickup truck is just considered a truck already. So major difference. So we just call it a pickup. So I drove my dad's pickup and also drove his SUV. And the pickup was my favorite. It was manual and I drove everywhere with it. And even to places that I'm not supposed to say. But anyway, we survived. I survived and my passenger survived. So I'm really a very careful driver. Uh, back home and even here actually so because I'm logical I like to use logic you know so I've been driving for years in the Philippines I can parallel park I can parallel in the Philippines it's like I don't know if you guys know but in the Philippines it's like an episode of Game of Thrones (laughs) looking and fighting and that was pre-corona days you know looking for a space to park your car it's literally an episode of Game of Thrones battle. It's a battle to find good parking, any parking at that. And to parallel park, it would have to be a necess- necessity sometimes. You know, you have to park on the road. And I was able to park. I don't really know how I did it, but I parked. I was a really good parallel parker using my dad's pickup truck. And he had sensors and all and stuff like that. But you just really, I don't know, I was just really good at it. And I probably lost that skill now. I'm just like, I rely too much on my uh, backup cam here. And I have, I drive a tiny car, so it's nothing. So I can park with inches on each side. And you have to back home, literally. And we actually hired uh, what we call a boy. We just call him boy. So he's a little... He's a kid usually between the ages of below 13, young kid, and he just walks. I don't know. Um, maybe we don't have child protective services in the Philippines. It's a different country. So you gotta be, you gotta be aware. So it is a third world country. So we have what we call a boy. So it's usually a young boy, sometimes an older man too, you know. Um, we pay him five, Pesos, which is, I don't know how much that, it's literally, is it less than, 
I'm sure it's less than a dollar <laughs> and it's less than 50 cents and even less than 25 American cents. So anyway, we just pay him f five pesos and it's literally a coin, a tiny coin. We pay the, the boy or the man a tiny coin and he will guide us. Uh, on how to line up our cars in when we do street parking and sometimes they're really helpful too they find uh, street parking for you and they say hey over here there's street parking it's reserved just for you you just gotta pay me uh, that boy doesn't own <laughs> that space he literally doesn't but he's willing <laughs> to do it for you. he just someone that roams the street and just literally does it maybe hopefully not for a living but maybe you know as a side gig on top of school i really do hope so uh, so anyway so we have that um and we don't have highways in the philippines it's uh, and we have i'm a defensive driver you have to be a defensive driver in the philippines so because there's literally a lot of people there's people everywhere <laughs> like i don't know where they come from it's a small country and i lived in a small island a tiny island i don't know about the size i don't know if it's smaller than, than jersey or around the same size as jersey but it's, it's literally if you mix jersey and um times square it would be like that my 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 island it's like literally a lot of people millions and millions of people with you're bumping into people all the time so i i was a defensive driver so when you really literally it's a battle just to drive you there's animals there's little kids that can cross the street at any one moment you literally have to be a psychic you literally have to calculate that okay i see that that child on the right that's running and that child's gonna run in, and cross the street randomly or I see that ball so there's a ball on top of someone's house or whatever someone's playing with a ball and that ball will wind up on the road and I have to be uh, prepared <laughs> and usually I'm very accurate too which is kind of weird because like okay yeah I expected a ball <laughs> and then, or cats or dogs or humans and women that just randomly run um, it could be anything <laughs> literally crossing the street. Um, it could be a wild animal. And one time, uh, I'm not kidding you, I think there was a, a horse and um, a horse that ran, ran loose. And I'm sure one was also, um, they were no, it wasn't a horse that ran loose. Um, it was a cow that ran loose. And it almost hit our car and this guy on a horse was chasing it down the road so literally I tell you it's like the wild wild west in the Philippines I'm not dissuading you from visiting it it's a really interesting and it's it's a really amazing country uh, especially my city of Cebu it's amazing but it's different if you're an American and just don't expect it to be America but I'm just saying that my background is I'm a defensive driver. I, I, I just, it's the way it was programmed because you have to. It's survival, literally, to not be on the road and not anything happen to you. It's a miracle. It's like literally the Game of Thrones every day. It's bloody. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Yeah, I can laugh about it, but it's really, um, if you have like nerves and stuff, don't drive in the Philippines. You won't survive it. You'll have a heart attack. It's crazy. Oh yeah, and there's motorcycles too. And I heard over the years that they have, and they're like a hassle because they weave in and out like those tiny, they call it mopeds here in America. We call it a motorcycle. And um, literally, uh, we call it habal habal, which means that there's literally two or three passengers and they're like weaving in and out of the road so you have to be careful of that too um it's literally a lot of things to watch out for so the roads in america i don't understand i think it could be the construction as well you know but it literally uh the drivers here don't make sense because they literally do like you just have to follow the rules you know because literally you're not driving for survival <laughs> there's no um basketball that 
you know, winds up on the road or a cat that jumps up on you or a little kid running. And um, one of the weirdest thing, uh, by the way, I digress. Weirdest thing, I was like driving and there's on the sidewalk was, um, I don't know, a, a girl or someone, I was an adult for sure, <laughs> wearing pajamas and a giant teddy bear walking on the sidewalk and I'm like okay that is that's very interesting I've seen it all literally so anyway so with that background I went to an American and I like oh I have an international license they will totally honor it so they did uh, in New Jersey so that was where I first had my license and <laughs> so I took the test I didn't have to take the uh the actual like driving test, which was mistake number one. <laughs> because uh, I was like, oh, I'm so confident. I don't need to, you know, yeah. And then <laughs> mistake number two was just skimming through the workbook or whatever the, not the workbook. It's not even a workbook. It's the pamphlet. So I just went through it maybe two, three times. I didn't really take it seriously. And I started like buying one of those like tests programs to simulate the real things and they gave you like test questions and stuff like that and I swear on the test I froze because I'm like oh my god I wish like I I wish I had memorized that pamphlet because literally it was word for word and it was like a paragraph I'm like dude this is so hard so I was doing any mini miny mo and I was like I remember um I was like thinking to myself was it 0.08 percent alcohol and I knew the signs of the signs were easy but it was like the the exact paragraph and stuff it's hard man so if you're gonna take a exam written exam for your um, license in New Jersey just memorize the darn thing because it's literally you have to memorize the paragraph and you have to like blank is blank and I'm like dude I didn't read that part I mean I read that part but I didn't memorize that part so I was like shaking I'm like oh my god there's just one one question and I'm like I'm gonna be done now so it's actually I remember praying and then like woof I clicked on the right one and it was the right one and I passed my driving test but that was like not it you know second um, uh, first mistake was not actually taking a driving class because i didn't know how different driving in america was going to be i was so confident i'm like yeah i know how to drive here and then my my boyfriend said okay okay i'm going to teach you how to drive and he he, he my ex-boyfriend by the way that's a re there's a reason he was my ex yeah <laughs> anyway and uh, he supposedly taught me how to drive, but I bought that. Uh, um, if you are driving in America, buy a Garmin for sure. The Google, yeah, they're okay, but I like the Garmin because it will literally tell you in 300 feet, turn right, and then it will tell you. It's pretty precise, especially if you bought, I bought the uh, more expensive one, uh, but it lasted like a, uh, a year or two. I literally just abused it. I think it lasted two years. Anyway, it's good. So I bought another one. So um, what happened is uh, he just taught me for a day. And he we literally argued because he was like, oh, you're a bad driver. You can't drive. And I'm like, dude, of course I can't drive. Like, this is America. Go go to my country and stuff and drive there. You'll die. You know, you'll literally die. And I, I he did visit. He did. Um hopefully we you know if I knew what I knew now I would have you know put something in his food to make him go a lot you know <laughs> I'm just being mean anyway <laughs> that's a that's a joke or is it um so anyway was I, I was uh he taught me for like maybe just a couple hours and we were arguing like you know and I was so stressed out I'm like of course I'm stressed out this everything here is so fast uh driving in the Philippines is like driving in Manhattan um it's literally the same thing except like uh, I think in Manhattan it's more more of a grid like it's really a confusing grid and there's construction everywhere so it's sort of similar but not because the uh I must say and I'm a pedestrian too, or I was a pedestrian in New York City for two years. They're very, very aggressive. They're not afraid of cars. So if you're driving in New York City, just be careful of those 
um, and that was pre-corona, so I'm sure it's different now. So anyway, I was driving, learning to drive in Jersey, and um, literally just followed Garmin, and I just, um, I just followed it. And when it told me to turn right, I turned right. And the thing about driving in Jersey is we have weird exits there. They call it a jug turn, and in order to get to the left side of the street, you literally have to do a, a jug turn and then like wind up in another, it's a separate exit and you turn, turn, turn and you, it leads you to a, a separate road where you wind up on the other side of the road. It's different. I'm like, dude, why can't they just construct it? No, no wonder there's a lot of accidents in America because the uh, road engineers are crazy. Why don't you just make the people turn to the left why why create a jug turn that you just do turns and turns so that you wind up on the other side of the street it's weird and it usually comes up really fast even garmin my garmin will like turn right you know <laughs> it's like and sometimes you can't you know because it comes up really fast um and anyway so it was just um eye-opening for me and to learn how I already know how to drive, but to learn to drive in another way, in different road conditions, uh, different constructions of roads, and with crazy road engineers that just don't make sense, man. Um, anyway, the hardest was probably in Queens. It's like, those people, man, it's like, they just give inches, and like, there's like a lot of tolls, and a lot of turns, and there's... The parking, people are parking on the street, and it's just, it's bad when you, I, I literally, uh, I've driven to Queens several times, and I was literally praying, I'm like, oh, I hope I survive this, it's very stressful, because it was the speed too, and people were driving close to you, and uh, it was just different, different animal. In Brooklyn, there was roads there that was, they are so annoying, man, there were like, multiple stoplights in every like couple of maybe a block or two it's like stoplight stop and then you go stoplight stop and then you go stoplight stop you go and this went on and on and on i'm like dude i don't think i can drive here just drive me nuts because it's either it's a go 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 or a stop 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 and depending on your timing and stuff but it's stressful because when you go through a goal suddenly it will stop so I don't know which part of Brooklyn it was but driving there was really crazy and I'm like the road engineers were probably not really thinking too much you know when they made the roads and um, I do remember this was my first infraction and this Jersey is weird. So I think it was along Secaucus. So there's what we call like a ramp. And then the ramp turns from two lanes to one lane. And one is called the shoulder. So I thought in my head, I'm like, what is this? Is this still part of the road? Um, did it start? Why would you have a shoulder on a ramp that turns from two lanes to one lane it didn't make make sense but literally i was being squeezed i'm like dude what was happening like um why is the the road why did two two roads or not two roads two lanes turn into one and literally there was a shoulder i like it didn't make sense and apparently like there was a police officer and he was behind me and he saw that he caught that and first thing he said was do you know what a shoulder is? And I said, of course I know what a shoulder is. And then like, <laughs> but he saw the confusion in my face. Did you know that was a shoulder? I said, of course I knew that was a shoulder. But you know, he <laughs> looked at me like, oh, and he looked at my, but I said, and he looked at my license and he realized that I haven't been driving too long. I think that at that time, I think it was just, a month or two that I was driving that was like and I guess he just said since this is your first time I'm not gonna I'm just gonna give you a verbal warning and stuff next time be careful 
be careful of the uh, shoulder and stuff, okay? And I'm like, yeah, thank you, officer. And I think I had to ask him for directions because, like, um, there's places in Jersey where your GPS goes bonkers, and usually it's places that have ramps and just crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what happened was... Uh, I had to ask him for directions. I was like, I don't know how to go home back home. It's dark. I'm like, it's scary. And he told me, yeah, just go straight. And then when you see that, turn right. And I actually made a mistake because it would just be straight. But for some reason, I don't know why I turned right. And I wound up in tolls. There's an area in Jersey, uh, Lindhurst, Secaucus area, where it's literally there's told and told and told and i'm like dude like this is so this is so stressful uh, another time that i got caught was in arizona because after that incident i have never been caught for speeding because i'm one of those people i'm like i'm obsessed like oh no i can't go over i can't go over five miles no no you know uh, i'm like so anxious and stuff um and i'm really very careful but Someone did warn me, like when they said, uh, when I, I, I mentioned that I was going to visit my friend in Arizona from New Mexico, I was driving from New Mexico. They said, Oh, be careful in Arizona. And I'm like, Why? Oh, they're very strict over there. And I'm like, I didn't, I listened, but I didn't really listen, listen. So there's apparently like a town there where there's a speed trap. So you go from, <laughs> You go from like 65, 55, 45, 35, 25 in just a matter of like less than a mile or something. And like, I, and I think it's even less than a mile, just a few, several feet. And it's like, what is that? You know, like, why would it turn suddenly like 55, 45, 35, 25? And I didn't like want to break right away because it was like, it was annoying. And. I noticed that another vehicle got caught by a police officer, so I was complacent. So I think I was going um, 40 on a 35 that turned 25, you know, because it was fast. The 35 turned 25 right away. And he caught me and he said, oh, did you know that you were speeding? Because I didn't expect there was, who has two police officers? Man, they're good. I didn't expect two police officers because I already saw, oh, there's, oh, oh, that person got caught. I'm sure there's only one police officer here. That there were two, maybe three or four. Who knows? That was a speed trap. And then this officer comes in and says, uh, okay, so did you know that you drove 40 on a 25? And I'm like, uh, I didn't really, like, I guess uh, I was honest and like, I didn't really notice and yeah, so he, he fined me and stuff. So that was my first speeding infraction. I was really pissed because, uh, I'm literally like, if you have a Garmin, it literally will track your speed and you will know if you're over speeding, it turns red. And every time it turns red, I'm like, I'm freaking out. It's, you know, but for some reason, I wasn't be being careful. So the police officer, he did. I guess my charms didn't work, you know. And maybe I sounded pissed. So my maybe my energy. I should have cried. And it was so. I was so pissed. I got my first uh, speeding ticket, which like, ugh, it's annoying because I've done. Um, I literally am on the road. Um, because I'm a, ho a home health um, healthcare worker. So I'm literally on the road all the time. I'm very, very careful. But apparently, you know, who cares? Anyway, <laughs> so there's like different ways of driving in America as I've not um, noticed. Um, so I was living in Colorado for six months. So I did the home health and um, I also did the... Uh, I just worked in, in a facility, so that was kind of fun. Um, but I, I tell you, in Denver, when it's snowing, it was like a normal occurrence that there was like a 70 pile, uh, pile um, wreck. It was normal because the people who are living in Denver, mostly I see Texas plates, California plates, so they are wild. Because I, I lived in um, New Jersey, but I worked in New York City, so the Northeast. So 
with snowman you just have to be careful actually when it starts snowing i start praying and i'm like Ugh, and i'm i really drive really slow you just really have to drive slow but these people are crazy so they they over speed and then of course you're gonna slide and stuff because you're over speeding so it's normal and i'm like yeah i can't live here so i actually left actually that's just one of the reasons why i left my ex is there so he can have he can have colorado he can have denver he, he can have the whole state yeah so um so i moved to um new mexico and i did home health too and boy oh boy was it a rude awakening because apparently they have snowstorms there and they have wind gusts that you cannot imagine at first i was thinking am i losing my mind is my car shaking is the truck in front of me shaking and swerving with the wind gust it's crazy it's like maybe more than 20 30 mile per hour winds or even more it's literally your entire car is shaking and i was like dude this is so stressful but um if you drive uh, in those conditions just don't just um just hold on to your steering wheel and hold them really tightly and stuff so it's different when you're driving in the snow and when you're driving in the snow you have to just move with the snow and don't hold it tight and stuff and don't break you know just don't accelerate just go with the flow but in a, a windstorm or a wind gust in the southwest in new mexico you have to really hold on to your steering wheel uh because it the wind will literally knock you out it, it will and also if there's a dust storm where you can't barely see anything uh you have to find the uh the shoulder the safest shoulder and just park park there and don't put your blinkers on because apparently if you do put your blinkers on that would uh, attract people and that would cause accidents and stuff uh but and that's what someone told me uh don't put your blinkers on um and just stay safely on the side of the road and let the uh let the dust storm settle so that it's crazy i'm like dude this is like this is so insane we don't have we don't have dust storms back home we just have rain and it's either just rain or the sunlight we don't have to deal with snow and like icy conditions and then s dust storms and then wind gusts that are like 30 40 miles per hour winds and stuff um yeah it's crazy and so last year i moved in texas and i like dude what's wrong with these people dude they don't know how to drive <laughs> so now i just have to chill i actually um even just do my prayer in the car you have to it's literally in texas um it's crazy and i noticed it if you're a texan and you don't agree with me because texans are very proud if you don't agree with me this is just my, my point of view you can laugh about it and you can just stop listening if you don't agree with me but yeah this is just my point of view and my experience anyway the texas drivers just break my brain because it has in the northeast you have to use your turn signal because you have to tell people where you're going because people there tailgate you you know and they're in a hurry because like it takes two hours to get back home dude and we we don't have time for people that are crazy and swerving all over you'll get like people get mad you know they want to know where you're turning so they can give you space and stuff and you don't have to deal with stuff you know so you can get home in like an hour and 59 minutes instead of two hours and 30 minutes you know so it's very just respectful to use your turn signal but apparently um apparently in texas no one uses there's i noticed maybe at least 30 percent maybe even more they don't use a turn signal or they use it incorrectly it's happened so many times it just breaks my brain i'm like dude my brain will break because <laughs> like they will turn their uh, signal light to the left and then they turn to the right and it's happened so many times i'm like 
I can't take this anymore. I'm going to go insane. <laughs> and then there's people that always have their turn signals on. And then like, yeah, I'm giving you space, dude. Yeah, you can go. And then they don't do anything. It's just on. <laughs> but you know what's so crazy? That it's constantly on. Like, let's say it's blinking to the left. So I give them space. And then I turn to the right. And not only that, they swerve far right. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't deal with this. <laughs> It's funny, but it's not funny. And there's also a lot of people here, maybe 40, 50 percent don't use their turn signal. You, that's unacceptable, especially in the Philippines. If you do that, don't do that. That's really disrespectful. And people are just going to honk on you because you're not supposed to steal the lane and stuff. You're supposed to turn your signal and then steal the lane. <laughs> So here, uh, they don't, they don't turn their, they don't use a turn signal. And so you have to be psychic. Uh, like this dude will just, I know this dude, because I'm, I'm a defensive driver. So I always um, anticipate like calculating this guy will 50%, 55%, he will just turn right. And most of the time I'm right, because I notice that even if they don't have their turn signal, they're, 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 uh, the car, their car or truck, there's a lot of trucks here anyway. And I, by trucks, I mean pickup trucks. I think most trucks in or most cars or vehicles in America are trucks. Anyway, so their trucks are just already veering to the side. And I'm like, oh, okay, you're not going to use your turn signal. You're just going to be an a-hole, you know, <laughs> and you're just going to do it. And then, yeah, and then. It's okay if they do that and they're far in front of you, but usually what happens is they're, they're literally like next to you and then they, they try to ram you and stuff. So you have to break and like, oh God, it's crazy. And not only that, they don't use their turn signals and then they cross many lanes. When I cross like multi, multi lanes, multiple lanes, and this is a crazy thing here too. There's literally like six lanes and your exit is like, less than 0.5 miles away so you literally have to turn signal turn turn signal turn turn signal turn you literally have to do it quick because you'll miss your exit and you'll wind up in another part of texas and you'll never be heard from again <laughs> so yeah it's crazy so but i use my turn signal because i want people to know that i'm going here i'm going there i'm going to the exit i want you to know so you will slow down and what's so crazy even if you put your turn signal on, they accelerate. And I'm like, dude, like I just told you, I'm, I need to go to my exit. And you know, there's an exit close by. I'm usually very, very, I let people through because I know that if you miss your exit, as I said, we'll never hear from you again. You'll be in another part of Texas and you'll be pissed. So I usually, um, especially people that use their turn signals, I usually, as long as they're not next to me, um, and then they're safely like distance, like I can see them. There's a, um, um, there, there's like ample space for them to turn. I give them space, but these people, when they see that I have my turn signal on, that's like a signal for them. Suddenly, like I'm just gonna accelerate and not give you space, so you will miss your exit. And I'm like, that just blows my mind. I'm like, dude, that's such a a hole. <laughs> That's a, such an a-hole move, man. And uh, there's also people that tailgate. I like, you know that there's multiple cars in front of you that are stopping. Why the hell would you tailgate? Usually it's trucks, though. They try to intimidate you. Uh, and I noticed, um, and this just made me just, uh, so we're like a, at a full stop and then someone's tailgating me. Uh, I notice they're too close. So what I do, I, I just pump on the brakes a lot of times and that seems to annoy them. And they start like, they're like, oh, this dude must be crazy or this gal must be crazy. So I'm just going to find, I'm just going to go to the next lane. <laughs> because like, it's literally annoying. It's just an inch or two. And like, you know, every car in front of you is already stopped. It stops. So it means there's no more space for you to go. So use your brain, man. But they still like tailgate you. I always give space because we don't know. You might have to 
stop so i just um lightly tap on my brake and just like multiple times so they're like okay this person's crazy i'm not going to deal with this person and they usually switch lanes which works by the way and uh, but i do that but i notice that there's people that steal your lane without using their turn signal and then i'm like okay i just let it through I'm like, okay, very zen now. I'm meditating in the car. I'm just going to let that person go. But then they start like breaking in front of you like multiple times. Like there's literally no car in front of them and they break and then they break and then they break. I'm like, dude, if you're just going to steal my lane, just go. But then they're like the serial breakers. I call them the serial uh, breakers. They just there's literally no car in front of them and even if there's a car in front of them ahead of them it's like maybe like two three cars away and then they break maybe they're stopping for a pebble on the road or whatever i don't know i can't understand it so the multiple breakers (laughs) those people um i i break it on purpose uh, to piss someone off at the back but these people they steal your lane and then they slow down and then they keep on stopping break stop break i'm like oh god that just blows my brain that just (laughs) literally breaks my brain um yeah and another thing i noticed here which is really very ideal is or not so ideal i mean uh really annoying is that because there's a lot of trucks i don't know maybe there's a lot of construction going on um there's just literally a lot of trucks in in texas and they put ladders uh, at the back of their trucks pickup trucks and most of the time they probably don't like um they don't probably tie it too tightly because ladders fall and i was so annoyed like i literally saw a few ladders and one of them uh, actually actually had to hit the ladder uh, luckily i didn't get really um hurt and and stuff and there's like a wheelbarrow that fell a baby carriage and oh my god would you believe it is i was so annoyed like too many ladders are like falling off the road this is just not acceptable you know or a bumper on the road middle of the road it's just not acceptable i say uh but the worst one literally and i was like it's like a smaller street but literally dude i was shocked it was an entire couch I like okay that that just literally broke my brain <laughs> oh another thing that really breaks my brain um driving in america are the merge lanes uh, i mentioned the shoulder and stuff but the merge lanes dude it's crazy why would you make why would you make a road that turns into one road you know like literally when you merge like okay i'm just gonna create a situation where people just compete for that one space on the road and they're going 65 75 miles an hour yeah that's a good idea i'm like dude why would you create that situation where people are competing for one lane on the road yeah because the merge lane to people that are not familiar if Uh, you're not living in america so the merge lane is literally when you come off the exit um a service road it's like the road on the leading to the you know the part of town downtown or any part of town suburbs or whatever so in order to go to the main highway you take a merge uh what we call a merge lane and then it literally is a merge lane (laughs) if you're not careful i mean like you have you're just going to bump into each other because and the crazy thing is people don't give you space too. literally like you have like a few seconds to make it it's either you make it or you don't make it Uh, because the one lane or the lane that's supposed to be two merges and turns into one lane so you're basically it's like the mad max of roads I don't know. Uh, I've been to Europe, but I didn't really pay attention because I wasn't driving there. But America is literally the Mad Max of the road. <laughs> like, uh, I guess you have to compete. 
you have to compete for that single lane. It's like one, I don't know if you've heard of Lord of the Rings or I'm sure you have, or if you have not, it's like there's a slogan there. One ring rules them all. So it's one lane rules them all. So, so apparently the, uh, the, uh, the engineers, the road engineers, they have not taken up physics because they should know that matter and space cannot occupy the same space at one time. And it's like, it's crazy. It's insane. And, but that's America, you know, that's driving in America. It just literally, it literally breaks my brain. I'm like, and since like I analyze everything, especially I'm on the road and like I'm a defensive driver, uh, and I try to anticipate things, you literally have to be a psychic and you literally have to pray. <laughs> you know, uh, so anyway, that is just my point of view and my experience of driving in America. Um, you may or may not agree with me. You might find this funny or not. Just don't hate me for it. Okay, there's too much hate in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And if you have, uh, email at homeofgenie at gmail.com. And if you don't enjoy this, don't bother to email me because it's and if you're just going to be one of those people are like I hate you I hope you're a firstborn kid um, you know blows up or something if you're going to be one of those weirdos don't email me but I really do appreciate if you like this and you enjoyed this and you agree with me and you just like you find my point of view interesting and you had fun while listening to this and maybe a laugh or two who knows you might find me funny or you may not um email me at homeofgenie at gmail.com and um, whether you're listening to this on itunes um iheart radio spotify audible or anywhere that uh, podcasts are available on your favorite app even Spreaker. I'm mainly on Spreaker. Um, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.